Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at exam style questions for the microscopy practical. Welcome back to our videos for microscopy. We've covered a lot of stuff so far about the background of what microscopes are designed for and then how we use them, how we prepare slides, how we would analyse the slides and the different evaluations and conclusions that we can make through the experiment. Now what we need to do is tackle some exam style questions that cover each of these sections and the sort of thing that you might see in your exam. So this first video will be talking mainly about the planning and the implementation and then the next questions will be covering more of the analysis and evaluation side of things. So let's read the first question here. So it says that a researcher is examining a crop which may be exposed to a recent bacterial endemic. The bacteria are thought to invade the epidermis of the leaves within the crop. Part A says, describe a method the researcher could use to prepare the epidermis for inspection under a light microscope. And it's about four marks. Before I show you what I've written, let's just analyze the question here. So basically we've got a crop and there's a potential bacterial infection in the epidermis of the leaf and he wants to use a light microscope to examine the epidermis and inspect it. And we want to describe a method. So when it says describe, look at the command word. That is basically going to be a situation where you need to list each step in the preparation. It's not really an explanation or a suggest. This is just some sort of method that you should really be familiar with. And it's referring to back in the planning section where we talked about how we would take an epidermis and prepare it for a slide. So let's look at what I've written here. So the first thing I've said is gather a fresh sample of leaves from several of the crops. So just writing the idea that you've got the leaves from several samples or several crops is a good start. And taking different samples is good because it covers a range of plants where some might be infected and some might not. So we've covered a good ground there. We then tear the leaves and then use the forceps to peel the epidermis cleanly away. So mentioning forceps and peeling the epidermis off would be another mark here. We then place the epidermis onto a clean slide, onto a drop of water, and then you place the cover slide upon this using a mounted needle. Again, this is all about what we talked about in implementation. We use forceps, mounted needles, and also gloves, which I haven't mentioned here, to reduce the contamination. You don't need to go into why we do this, because it's just describing the method question. And then I put at the end, wipe away any excess water and stain if necessary. So although there are about five separate marks going on here, in biology you'll find that a lot of questions, there's a list of marks that you're allowed to pick up and they're just looking as to which ones you've written down. It's never a bad idea to write down extra facts if you can think. I've covered the method up, up until wiping away the excess water. Staining isn't really required. We don't know much about what sort of stains this leaf would need, but it's just something to mention and it acknowledges the fact that you're aware of it. So that's how I would answer this question. The next question, part B, says, one disadvantage of the light microscopes is that their magnification is limited. State an instrument the researcher could use with higher magnification if the source of infection was a very small virus. So this kind of goes back to the background video that we did. And we mentioned that light microscopes do have limited magnification, but there are other instruments that have a higher power. And we know that certain things are visible to the naked eye, certain things are visible to the light microscopes, and certain things are visible to electron microscopes. A very small virus is only really going to be picked up as a large molecule underneath an electron microscope. So the answer that I've put for this question is simply an electron microscope. And you can put scanning or transmission, it doesn't really matter, but that's the mark for that one. Part C then says, in preparing the slide for the light microscope, what two actions could the researcher take to minimise contamination of the slide? Explain your reasoning for each. So this kind of follows on from part A in that why did he do things in certain ways or why would you prepare things in a certain way to reduce contamination? And it says to explain your reasoning for each. So the reason this is four marks is you would have your two actions and for each action the reasoning for each one. So what I've written here is the first thing I've said is to wear gloves when handling the epidermis and when handling the slide. So that's one thing you can do, that's one action you can take. So this is to prevent bacteria or other microbes on the hand from infecting the specimen which may have shown up under the microscope. So then you've explained it. You've explained that it can be contaminated from your skin because your hand has a lot of bacteria living on it, good and bad bacteria, and you're deliberately trying to look in this situation for a leaf that's been infected by bacteria because of this endemic. You don't want to be looking at a leaf that's been infected from the bacteria from your hand because that will give you a false impression that something's going on. So explaining this is really important for each of your marks here. The second mark I said was to use forceps to transfer the epidermis. 
So this is not only to prevent germs, but also physical distortion because of the grip of the hand is less precise, so it's more likely to get damaged if not using forceps. So again, using forceps and explaining why we do that. So that should cover your four marks. Part D says the researcher begins observing the slides with an objective lens with magnification times four, and the overall magnification is times 40. So what is the magnification of the eyepiece lens? And this is two marks. So this is a quick calculation. If you remember from the slide on the analysis, you can have an objective lens and an eyepiece lens, and each of them can have their own magnifications. And we're going to have to find the eyepiece lens magnification using the overall one and the objective lens magnification. So I'll show you the answer that I've written here. So I wrote that I know the objective lens is times four, and the eyepiece lens is times something we don't know, and that the overall magnification is times 40, which means that the product of these two must be 40. So if this times this is 40, then 40 divided by the objective must give us the eyepiece magnification, and 40 divided by four is 10. So the answer is times 10. So part E then says, under times 40 magnification, the bacterium found within the epidermis measures 0.5 millimeters in his plan drawing. What is the actual size of the bacterium in micrometers? So this is one of those questions where we require the formula triangle. So I'll show you what I've written here. So I always write the formula triangle out because that's a good starting point, remembering that it's I on top of am, so I am. And then I always write what I know. So I know the magnification is times 40, and I know that the image size is 0.5 millimeters, and recognizing that the actual size is going to be I over M. So that usually gets you one mark, just by stating this. So this is why it's really important to show you're working in these kind of questions. And then I basically plug the numbers in. So I over M becomes 0.5 over 40, and this gives me 0.0125 millimeters. And timesing this by a thousand to make it into micrometers, because it's, that's what it's asked me for, gives me 12.5 micrometers. So you get the second mark for getting the answer. You can still gain one mark if your answer's wrong. It's all about following through and showing you're working out. Part F then says, with a times 10 eyepiece lens and a four times objective lens, the stage graticule covers 20 eyepiece units on the eyepiece graticule. How much distance does one EPU represent? So this is a typical graticule kind of question, and it's only two marks. If you remember the procedure, these are quite similar, and it's very easy to get marks on these. So the stage graticule is always 1,000 micrometers. They sometimes state this, but if they don't, assume it's this anyway. 1,000 micrometers covers 20 EPUs, so you have to recognize that one of these EPUs, has, we've divided by 20 to get down to 1, so we do the same to the 1,000. 1,000 divided by 20 is 50. So one eyepiece unit represents 50 micrometers, and that's the two marks. Question G then says, across several slides, the bacteria appear to take on different shapes. They are all of the same strain. What explanation would clarify the different shapes observed? So there's a few bits of important information here. This is across several slides and they take on different shapes. So we're seeing different things. They're all of the same strain. This is a fact that the question's told you. The same strain of bacteria means that they're the same type and species and that they have the same antigens upon their surface. So what could explain the fact that even though they're the same strain, he's seeing different shapes in the slides? Well, if you think back to our evaluation, this all comes back to the point that light microscopes are observing 2D specimens from a 3D world. So if we look at the answer I've written here, I've said the bacteria have similar 3D shapes to each other because they're all the same strain, yet the 2D slices of tissue cuts them at various planes. So the fact that you've recognized that you've taken 3D bacterium but cut them at different planes is an important mark. In a 2D slide, they will appear to be different shapes. So it's all about relating the fact that they will appear different shapes because you've taken them at various planes, and the fact that in the 3D world, they live in all in the same shape, it's just that they can be cut at different angles. Finally then, we've got a question that says, suggest an error in the procedure the scientists could have made. So remember, I always go through highlighting and underlining, but it's important to look at who's made the error, what information they've told you. So suggesting an error that the scientists could have made to explain different measurements in cell size across the slides. We've already talked about the idea that they can take on different shapes, but that's not really a human error. That's just something that can happen in lots of different experiments regarding microscopy. But a human error that means they could be different slides, this could cover lots of things. So I've written here some of the marks that you could have gained. I've written three out here, but you could actually just take one of them and get the mark. The first thing I've written is that the scientists may not have focused properly for some of the slides. So the fact that they would have appeared blurred 
would have altered the measurements in distance that he would have gained. So this could have explained the difference in cell sizes across the slides. You could also introduce the idea that there was contamination with other bacteria. So if he didn't use gloves or forceps in preparing the epidermis, there could be other bacteria or other cells or bits of debris in the slide that he could have mistaken for the infection, but actually it was just a contamination error. And then I also mentioned damage or change because, again, of the preparation, and this would alter their appearance. So any physical forces from the forceps or from not preparing the slide very efficiently may have actually changed the size or the appearance of certain aspects of the slide. So we've covered a few analysis questions here, which usually center around magnification, graticules, and there's certain equations you need to learn, but once you're very familiar with those and once you're happy with units and standard form, there's only a limit to how much they can really ask you. And the numbers are really the only thing that changes with that. And the evaluation can be very much a suggestive sort of question. Suggesting a human error, you just have to think about it in terms of a story. Going from the preparation of the slide to measuring the distance, what errors could have been made by the instrument or by the human to allow something like this to happen, to allow different measurements to come up. And you always have to read the question really carefully. Question G was always talking about why there were different shapes although they're all part of the same strain. And that's not really a human error, that's an error or a limitation that light microscopes have. Whereas part H was talking more about a human error. So they may have actually been the same size in part H's scenario, but it was his measurements and his errors that you have to start thinking about. So that's the end of our microscopy videos. Thank you for listening. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.